my name is Rapso DIY, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Uh, right, yeah, 14. Seems right for the defect currently. Lower max HP, but that's okay with us. Uh, take 18 for 250 gold. Early enough shop to take advantage of that. Mm, possibly. There is a possible four elite pass with three question mark, four question marks, rather, uh, before the first elite. Any of those could be a shot. Alright, this is going to be like kind of a, a risky throwaway, definitely. Playing high risk, high reward here for the first one. Usually I save that for the later recordings in a single episode. But I don't know, something feels right about this one. Streamline is going to be incredible for getting us through the upcoming elites. Heck, it's great here too. Alright. Power Potion as well as Buffer is really good for Elites. Yeah, have to take it. I'll take just the straight up heal in this position. Helps me kind of meter out the effects of the first. That is to say, of the first space in the game where I removed... A bunch of my HP. Dope. I'm hoping that's how our elite fights go as well. No, I'm not taking any of those for the elite fights though. Ooh, zapping the opening hand as well as the send is main. Pretty good as long as I next get buffer. Great, and the next hand, Zap Streamline. Come on. Zap Dual Cast. Guess I'd do it. Haven't really got more time. So the buffer prevents 20 damage here, and I got to line it up long before the 20 damage actually occurred. Easy. Come on, semi-reasonable draw here. That's a semi-reasonable draw. Tori, whenever you would receive five or less unlocked attack damage, reduce it to one. Oh, you know I love me some of that. Uh, you know what? I actually will take the sweeping beam. I think we're early enough in the game that uh, that's still a good value proposition there. I'm going to upgrade the Streamline because I haven't yet fought the Gremlin Knob and the Streamline is the most potent thing that I can have in that combat in particular. Okay. It's dual cast for... Oh my god, it hit the same target twice? Well, I guess we do get to use the Explosion Potion then. I did not expect that to occur. Frankly, I thought it was incredibly unlikely it would. Tori has been regularly saving us 4 HP in this fight. It's been overperforming, if anything. Vartra started combat with one strength as well as a glacier. You just take that, kind of. Unless you have anything already anti synergistic with it, you just kind of take it. Uh, we also got the Gremlin Horn. Whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. We get Zap again in the opening hand for this combat. Mm. Having Buffer be lower cost in the next uh, cycle is still really important. Uh, I play a normal strike here because if I play the Sweeping Beam and it happens to draw the Streamline, I'm in a really bad position. Unfortunately, Streamline was at the bottom of a new shuffle. Spoken about that being the worst position possible in the deck for a card you want to consistently play before, so... I'll save you the ear chewing. Frozen Egg. Whenever you add a power card to your deck, upgrade it. Lovely. That is just extremely powerful as far as cards go. Speaking of as far as cards go, let's go for an upgrade here. Get a Zap upgraded. 
upgrade or remove it. It's just not value at its current cost. You know what? I'm going to save the extra HP. I wasn't relying on looking at my draw there or anything else. It's just... Should have just considered going for the kill. So we go for the block potion. Do I take Hello World? No. It does come pre-upgraded, but it's still garbage. Okay. I was very much hoping that we'd hit the front or the backliners with that one so that we would have a setup for a streamline kill in this turn. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Thanks to that block potion, we'll only take one damage this entire turn. Come on, and lethal on at least one of them. That'll have to do. Alright, I'll just block again. There's no reason to take one damage here when I think it's very unlikely I actually do need to take it. Sweet. Pantograph, at the start of boss combat seal for 25 HP as well as a copy of Storm. We take Storm only because we have frozen eggs, so... All Storms from now on are pre-upgraded. Obviously, Storm right now is complete garbage, but... I'm pretty likely to take every power that I now see. Splits it 33. Enemy is about to take six damage. Okay, we're fine. Sweet. It's a dual cast sweeping beam, so if we do get the dual cast back, that's great for us. All right, didn't manage to, but that's okay. At least it's still in the deck and gets the double kill for me. Hologram is just a nice value pick, commonly. Um, okay. I'll upgrade buffer in this position, because I've got three hands before the enemy harms me. Significantly, at least. So all I had to do is get the buffer out in that time. Got it out in the absolute first turn. So three hands, a deck of 16 cards, one of those cards draws a card. I was always guaranteed to have it in time. It's the only reason I was capable of taking that risk. Okay, so the enemy takes 9 damage to this, so they go down to 85. If I strike them again, they'll go down to 70-something. Okay, cool. So this sets me up to aggress as much as possible in this hand. The Gambler's Brew, all of those. Alright. Pretty reasonable damage. I hate that I split them both perfectly this turn. Makes them a little more difficult to clean up after. Streamline, we'll hold the ground back the streamline, play it again. Strike on the target that I set up ready for a strike in particular. Alright, we're good. I could have just ended turns until we finished there. Very glad that I went for the upgrade. Hadn't actually considered the fact that I had the pantograph healing me for 25. I should have considered that, obviously. We'll take the echo form here, pre-upgraded. Um... Extra energy is really important with all of these, but also card selection is really important. We don't have too much card cheating in the deck so far, so I think I take the Velvet Choker. Especially if we just get more powers, we should be able to get by on just dropping bombs. I'm okay with taking one damage this time. I'm actually tempted to use the power potion here to look for electrodynamics.
Echo form actually doesn't really serve much use here. Ouch. Uh, okay, streamline, hologram back to streamline, and streamline again is at least enough to get one kill. Definitely Glacier Dual Cast. Get as much damage out there as I possibly can. And wasn't enough to kill the bird in the front line. Just a little luckier and we would have gotten it. That's okay. With time. Heat sinks whenever you play a power. Draw two cards. Yeah, I'll take it. I shouldn't take another one of those though. So I negate this whole first turn's worth of damage, but still not super pleased with it, frankly. The fact that I can hologram streamline hologram again is really important. I could have taken one damage there to put out the heat sinks. I wonder if I should have considered that more seriously than I did. No, definitely should have. All right, I'm actually going to go for victory here. I don't think we've got, like, a huge chance, but based on what we get from the Power Potion, we could be in with a shot. Alright, so I'll Power Potion next turn, just because I've got the Echo Form, so it's possible we double up on the Power Potion for something ridiculous. Um... Hmm... I think I have to double up on machine learning. Hologram back glacier, play it. Heat sinks. Great, so I can double streamline a target now. Kills the taskmaster for me easily. All right, since I've got two buffer up, we should just be completely comfortable here. By Gremlin Knob, I will take the turn up. Uh, you can only become frail as well as the singing ball. When adding cards to your deck, you may raise your max HP by two instead. Take a copy of loot. Great all strikes and defense here. Yeah, we have enough strikes and defense yet. Uh, left, rather, to do that. Happily, in fact. Ah, uh, don't go for another heat sinks here, though. White noise is pretty good. So is gold plated cables and medical kit. In fact, I'll go for all of them. Do I also want to take the Mercury Hourglass? Yeah, three damage to all enemies at the start of each round is actually really significant. I wonder if maybe that wasn't necessarily the smartest move. Ended up taking one damage. Can't really tell. Definitely the extra copy of Storm there. Hoping pretty badly for Glacier here. Uh, buffer, that's pretty good. Let's murder the shield gremlin first. And buffer. Great. So I prevent 20 damage worth here. I actually want to hologram out the echo form. Getting out the echo form is incredibly important here. Doubling up Glacier next turn could even be the play. you know, maybe it's not even slightly that. I hate that I did that in that order. That's entirely just my misplay though. Not like a miscounting or anything like that. That's just me being bad. Alright. 
<clears throat> boss down, letter opener. Every time we play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies, as well as... No, don't want more card draw in this deck. That'll interfere with the Velvet Choker even more commonly. Let's lose the 74 gold here. We don't have any sh upcoming shops, do we? Uh, in a little bit of time, we do. I'll lose the Swift Potion then. Dead Branch! Whenever you exhaust a card, add a random card to your hand. Alright, every copy of Double Energy that we can find then. Fourteen damage here. I really need more defense in this deck. Whoo! Look at that echo form. Neat. What gives me the best chance? This is 15 damage, 15, 10. So I can't just kill the backliner with the barrage and a strike here, unfortunately. So I would have to commit a streamline as well as one of the other attacks, which means that I end up with only one energy left over because I spend three there. I get one back for the kill. I was really hoping for different targets there. Literally, if it hit the frontliner, then the frontliner would have taken 8 damage. 8 damage puts them down to the strike and barrage range. If it hit the backliner at all, then the streamliner would have been able to kill. Like, the loop literally just needed to not hit the taskmaster in the middle twice. Because, obviously, the other two are doing more damage. Pretty sure we now can't win. Yeah, we lose. That sucks so much. So, uh, it hit a 1 in 3 and then a 1 in 3. So, a 1 in 9. Uh, at that point, I would just lose. And we did. Sweet. It happens. Sometimes it happens again and 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 again. But sometimes it happens. Look at three random potions. I think the only two that are going to be super useful in the early game. I'm glad that we managed to get past the first floor, hunting as much as we possibly did. Uh, there's a four midline rest with only two elites here on the first floor. I'm actually kind of intrigued. Especially as defects, because then I can get the early upgrade on Zap and Dual Cast. And then, ooh, we're off to the absolute races then. Another copy streamline, sure. Waiting on the next dual cast here to finish it off. Never mind. Tempest, Doom and Gloom, Melter. Doom and Gloom literally just is like value AoE right now. Alright. Enlightenment Zap. Chaos Vision. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be able to upgrade the fission early enough that I'm fine with it. Do I want to take another zap? Yeah. I have a relatively high cost doc, uh, deck already. Purposefully not pairing the steam barrier though. Uh, plus, I have the ability to upgrade both of the zaps here on the opening floor, and each of them is going to be help for the fission, so. Honestly, all of it seems to check out for me. Alright. Got him. It's completely past that. Uh, upgrading the fission is important, but upgrading the zaps so that I can actually play them in boss fights is super important as well. Electrodynamics. I literally opened that hoping that I would find electrodynamics. I am so damn pleased that I did. I'm not going to use the regen potion in this fight because I'm not going to get two potions as a reward for this fight. And it's quite likely that I take no more damage. Like that. 
Or a Calcum if you end a turn without blocking six block, as well as charge battery. I'm taking like a lot of value picks right now. I'm worried that all of the value picks that I'm currently making will ultimately mean that I have like a really, really weak archetype in my deck. Let's see if that happens to come to pass. Getting all these early upgrades though, ooh. It is difficult to argue that is anything but excellent for us. With the regen potion in this position. Shouldn't have gone to the regen potion. I keep forgetting about the burst potential of the fission that we have in our deck. Oh, the zaps on the first turn. Oh, ho, ho. that's really good for us. All right. No. That's a phone ringing. I turn it off silent for a couple minutes. Consume ball lightning, go for the eyes. That's another strong no. All right. Upgrade hits the doom and gloom. Passing for a little while longer. Well, we get to block eight with the Fossilized Helix here. Fossilized Helix is huge for us. Absolutely insane. Could not be more pleased to have it. Or a Calcum in the early game will help us protect it, but in the long run, it's all about that Fossilized Helix. Darkness with one more space left to upgrade makes sense. We're just like a fast cycling Dark Orb deck. That's a thing. That's totally a thing. You can't tell me that's not a thing. I've done that thing. So a thing. No matter what I did, I was losing my Fossilized Helix that turn anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to be too quick about this one. It'll all work out. When I say fast cycling, I mean it. I'll blow up a dark orb as soon as it gets to anything reasonable. Sweet. Rainbow. Only thing that makes sense for this current deck archetype. Inability to gain gold, no. Inability to play the extra cards, obviously not. Inability to rest. All right. I'm going to have to hope that the defense from the fossilized helix is fine. Okay. How about I go three rests, two elites? Other than that, there's three elites, one rest. That's about it, though. Can even incorporate a midline shop if I want to go. Yeah, okay. Yep. I think we'll be going with the path that I had initially set out in my to-do plan. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to protect me against the first hit. It's more than AK, though. Ooh, nice vision. Oh, what? 
Okay, so... Fission evokes them at the same time. So they both tried to target the same target. That is maddening. Evoke all your orbs. Yeah, I guess evoking them all at the same time means that the dark orbs won't target different targets, but that's also just completely dumb. Because lightning orbs don't target targets that are dead. But if they were all evoked at the same time, they should do that. That's... I don't like that. Uh, I'll take a hologram as a way to get another copy of the darkness into the deck. Yeah, that'll be super helpful for not resting. It's huge for us. Absolutely monumental. Okay. Keep going, Fission. With Apparition and Oracalgum, a lot of the time you can get away with not blocking at all. Just because the Oracalcum will block you while you are only taking that one damage. Neat, right? Let's take the 99 gold. I don't need to lose any HP here. There's nothing to lose any HP about. Everyone strikes and defends. Okay, the deck is actually getting to like really good value quite quickly here. Uh, those apparitions do need to be upgraded. But the Collector Fight isn't super dire to have them upgraded by, so they don't really have the same kind of deadline they might otherwise have. I purposefully leave the Darkness out here. Yeah. And that's a good indication why right there. Because I've just ended up with a really good Darkness. Super neat. Yeah, that's an easy kill for us. We find an attack potion. I'm more than happy to take that over a uh, Snecker Oil. Snecker Oil is rare, but I absolutely hate it. Is there anyone that actually likes Snecker Oil? I, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone actually sing its praises. Okay, I do need more draw. Attack potion. Okay. Still only barely blocked the incoming damage that turn. It's very important that we block incoming damage while we waited for our apparitions to start turning up because those will just drag us through. They're kind of set to carry our lifeless corpse over the finishing line. Alright, I'm gonna... How on earth have you... Alright, that's that phone's on silent, and then I'll turn it on a different kind of silent. Uh, we'll return the dual cast so we can get the double kill. Double apparition up again. Alright, we've got this. Good fight, took no damage. Happy Flower. Ooh, considering how long these fights go, I'm actually really, really pleased to see that. The start of each combat, Channel 1 Dark, Symbiotic Virus. That is a huge carry piece for us. That is actually... Mm, that's so important. Uh, da, da, da. start each combat with one artifact. I love that. We don't play enough attacks really to use the kunai, unfortunately. Uh, but the loop is actually huge for us as well. So we'll take the loop. Um, I'm thinking probably a hologram at a card removal. Card removal on... No, not dual cast. I was thinking of the dual cast for a second, but then I realized we're a darkness build. Uh, so we'll take a strike out of the deck and then pick up the hologram. Oh, 
Oh, this is so solid. We've got this. Oh, look at that dark orb. Gonna build up big. Gonna grow up all big and strong. Only way this could get better right now is with gold-plated cables, basically. Like, that's the only real difference that I would make. Pretty well queued up here. Alright. Darkness. Hologram back to the darkness. Darkness. Gold plated cables? You're right, most all triggers this passive an additional time. Alright, I'm taking self-repair. Keep me alive while I do all of this. Uh this is this is now absolutely incredible. So gold plated cables is like having an unupgraded loop in play at the start of each combat. The big difference between them is that loop triggers at the start of your turn, whereas uh, gold-plated cables triggers at the end of your turn. Okay. Alright. Look how quickly that Dark Orb grew. Oh, God. That's bonkers. I love it. Hologram back the dual cast. That off. No need for any of those. Thank you very much. We are far past the time for any of those. Uh, the holograms both need to be upgraded. They're just for pulling back darkness, basically. Not a great opening turn, I'll admit that much. Okay. Darkness, hologram, the darkness back. Darkness again. Then I'll fission, which will kill one of these chomps. Yep. Okay, so the incoming damage is 28. I can't block against that even with the block potion, so I'm fine to lose my buffer here. Excellent. Finally starting to get those apparitions. Got that dark orb out in the front. Still haven't got loop up, unfortunately. So, the first artifact prevented weakness, not vulnerability or frailty. A lot of the time, that becomes a discussion point uh, when talking about... Hang on. Hang on while I figure this out for a second. I can just go straight up damage on one target. I could have Doom and Gloomed and then pulled it back out and Doom and Gloomed again. But a lot of the time, when talking about survivability from the Collector's large attacks that they can do after the debuff, the discussion is around whether or not you could prevent it vulnerability or frail, but the first thing that is prevented by artifact is weakness. So you would have to have two or three stacks of artifact before you can actually make an appreciable difference there. Um, which is unfortunately bad news to hear. Just been waiting for dual cast this whole time. There we go. Hologram back to darkness. Unfortunately, the collector is summoning enemies at kind of a prodigious rate. It's making my life a little bit difficult in terms of trying to kill the protector, the protector, the collector rather. I'm gonna hologram back a dual cast, play the dual cast with damage, then darkness. All 
right, this Dark Orb should grow relatively fast. Unfortunate that you decide to summon at this point, but that's okay. Maybe I could pull back a kill. All right, Doom and Gloom. Hologram back to Doom and Gloom. A Doom and Gloom again here. I'm, I'm not dead, I'm fine. Sets me off for a kill next turn, though. That got real dicey. That is the one problem that Dark Orb decks often have. With bosses that summon minions, especially, it can be difficult to kill those minions, then the boss. Uh, Buffer is incredible. Echo Form is obviously incredible as well. Echo Form with, a, a, with apparitions is just insane. Uh, I actually wanted another point of energy here, but I'll, I'll settle for Black Star. Leaks drop an additional relic when defeated. I usually like that after the first boss, but that's okay. All right, well, we can get four elites on this floor, and I'm kind of keen. Double up on an apparition. Oh, it can just be lovely. Streamline, pull out another streamline. Streamline again. God, if I only could have played the self-repair there as well. I don't want to attack here because I don't want to kill yet. Because self-repair could still be pulled back by another... Never mind. Another copy of hologram that I have in my deck. Pre-upgraded leap. We are a little light on... No, we're not a little light on defense. Apparitions, we're fine. Don't don't believe the lies, Ryan. Doing it. Give me the red relic. I don't like it. Put it back. Had to block for all of that just to prevent my buffer being popped. Lame. All right. Apparition. I don't know. Charge battery, hologram charge battery. We don't really have a good deck right now. Or rather, any good plays right now. That's what I mean. Cool. This is a lot better. Let's loop Doom and Gloom Darkness. And just Fission. Blow up a target a bunch. Neat. And Echo Form Apparition as well. God, these apparitions are just so, so hard carrying us right now. Double playing apparitions when possible from Echo Form. Just incredible. Who's our boss this floor as well? Awakened one. How many powers do we have in the deck? Oh, three powers in the deck. Only two that we really want to play. Only one that we have to play. Totally fine. We'll be okay. Prayer Wheel. Normal enemies drop an additional card reward as well as new. None of that. Thank you. Streamline, hologram, streamline. Yes, I will take damage this turn, but we get to remove a target from the field, which is incredible here. Sweet. With all of these apparition stacks, we can actually just start attacking these enemies and we'll be totally fine. Yeah, there's no real reason to bother getting the Echo Form involved here. Neat. Alright, that's us back on full HP, as well as... It took me a while there to remember that I shouldn't pick up Storm. I do want to get a bunch of Thorns for the boss fight. As in, for the heart fight, but... 
Impatience. If you have no attacks in hand, draw two cards. We have very few attacks in the entire deck. That's just draw for us. That's gas, baby. All right, let's go for the rare relic here. Ooh. You can play the self repair there, obviously. That's uh, just a dumb mistake. All right, I'm going to double play an apparition, hologram back the self repair, play the self repair, and the charge battery. Uh, doubling up on the apparition is actually important because it blocked for this turn. Wait. That Dark Orb all big and fed. It's going to grow big and strong. And yeah, it's now 66 damage. Dual cast is a kill. Well, actually, it's 110 now. 110, 102. Mango, if I pick up, raise your max HP by 14. Pretty damn good. not super keen on that turn. We didn't really get much set up. And we did lose a bunch of things that we did want to keep set up. Let's pull back a strike. Simple. Just to kill the target on the back line. Thank you, Apparition. Sorry, Apparitions. Uh, thank you to Intangibility for saving me that turn. I'm going to dual cast here. Set up for... Uh, Doom and Gloom. No, we still haven't got Darkness yet. Uh. All right. Just trying to get a Dark Orb out there. I'd have loved to play the Echo form, but the intangibility was too important. Sweet. Hey, we did actually manage to get the dual cast there. Got him. Uh, Pendib, every 10th attack you play does double damage, as well as future card reward screens. You have one additional card to choose from. Thank you. I want all those other apparitions upgraded, but I don't know if I want to take the time to do it. Really. I had to drink there for the full block. I need to make sure that if the enemy is going to launch a 45 into me before I draw my apparitions. Didn't know I was going to draw three of them next hand. Uh, that I have my buffer still up. Well, at the very least, I still have my buffer. It's going to be a mighty dark orb very soon. Okay. Strike Impatience? Definitely to start with, at least. Yeah, I'm not going to fish in here. I'm just waiting for dual cast on the right turn. Double play darkness, it pops that, does 126, enemy goes down to 33 HP. I can't pull back anything that'll kill them at that point, so I actually... Oh no, wait, I'm already fully defended. What am I even talking about? I'm fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, we good. This is the reason that I saved the buffer. So the frost and the aura calcum should trigger before the burn. It does. On ability pop. That'll do it. Uh, Sundial, every three times you shop your deck, gain two energy as well as a bug of marbles. Take a pre upgraded charge battery there. More than happy to see it. Regal Pillow, whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP. Okay, we're getting some reasonable stuff here. Uh, Transient, I think I've already killed you in this series, right? Haven't I? I feel like I've. Not need to take that hit. Trying to save an apparition. What do I even bother? Apparition, hologram back, and apparition play the other apparition. Easy. Well, it looks like we never really stood a chance. So we just blow him up with self fusion. Sweet. Do you like white noise? Pre-upgraded reinforced body is way better though. Actually, I'm not even gonna take white noise because of the elite that we have, the uh, elite boss that we have at the end of the floor. I'm just gonna take my money and walk away. I'm not risking getting the gremlin visage there at the very start. That would just be tragic. Oh, double up on apparition, obviously. I didn't even know why I considered anything else there. Yikes. That would have been a dumb thing to do. Definitely double up on the doom and gloom here. play the streamline again, just get it to zero cost, it's easier to cycle through. Getting all that extra intangibility matters more to me. I can just wait for the knives to kill themselves. Sure, they're gonna put a wound in my deck, but that's... whatever. Backline of knife murders itself. Frontline of knife is half on the way. All right. Frontline of murders itself, and now I just have a clear shot at the Reptomancer, and easy. Uh, Shuriken. Every time we play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength as well as the Toxic Egg. Whenever you add a skill card to your deck, upgrade it. Would have liked that a lot earlier. We will take the reboot though. Immediately get us upgraded. Darkness Vision. Hey, get that draw. Well, reasonably pleased with how that turned out. Was a little close for comfort, but, you know, can't complain. Too loudly, at least. There's no need for the self-repair, though. We just get the extra intangibility for next turn. Turns out to have been worthwhile. Come on, you'll cast me. That'll do. Alright. Second copy of Glacier. Glacier is actually really difficult for us to play right now. You should still have a second copy of it though. Another charge battery. Um, I'm gonna drop the energy potion for the steroid potion here. 
Hopefully it'll help me push through the start of the elite fight that we're about to get. Elite boss fight. God damn it. Boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. I really wanted to get the Doom and Gloom out there to have an orb already start building, but this is going to make our next darkness so much better. Or we can do it like this. Managed to get my dark orb at the front of the party. Oh, great. I'm already committed to waiting. Reboot. No more apparitions in the entire deck. Should play it while I have it. I don't think we're going to be in this fight for much longer. One turn away from now, we're going to be gunning for lethal. So basically, literally all we need is the ability to pop the orb in front or the ability to pull back the dual cast that we just lost to pop the orb. Frozen egg, when you get a power card to your deck upgraded as well as ice cream. Neat. Um, don't need for any of those. Well, maybe FTL, actually. We don't do too much drawing after a certain point, and it cycles easily. Yeah, we should have taken the FTL. It would have given us the ability to possibly trigger the shuriken, uh, as well as to get closer to our pen nib. It's not going to be a huge difference. My... Save and quit, save and quit, save and quit. Continue. Woo! Recall. Uh, it's not going to be a huge difference, mind. But it'll still be a difference. Echo Form's still important to play here. It's a pretty good opening turn. Getting out Echo Form in that opening turn is huge. So we double up on that Streamline. Now that Streamline is free from here until forever. I should have already done this. That's my bad. Oh, <gasps> Clockwork Souvenir! Oh, I forgot that I had a Clockwork Souvenir. I can't believe it. So garbage. Right, at the very least, I still don't take any damage. Definitely double up the apparition as much as I want to do it on the Doom and Gloom. Oh, have to double up the loop as well. Extremely important. Reboot there to make sure that I still get some value out of this hand. Dark Orb back to the front line as well. We've got a double loop out there, so this Dark Orb is going to go real well. Yeah, this is, this is going to be an easy fight for us. We can retain basically as much energy as we want. Mm-hmm. Double that strike so I can impatience. Pull back the dual cast as well. Sweet. So I've lined myself up with another Dark Orb, getting ready to beat the next form of the Awakened One. Could naturally defend this turn. Depends. I mean double giant reinforced body would do it. I guess I still do it, yeah. So I just need my next hand to be... what? Calipers, unfortunately, isn't something that we have, so we don't get to keep all of that. Right. 
Let's hologram back the reinforced body. So we do end up taking damage here, but that's okay. Dual cost. Just had to wait on it. Now, again, because the heart can't take more than 300 damage in a single turn, this kind of build is extremely inappropriate for the heart. So we got our Ascension 14 victory, and now we'll try our luck. Which I don't think will hold. Because it won't. Alright, let's get that dual cost upgrade. That's actually something significant for us. Wow, start his combat with three additional orb slots. I'll take it. Uh, also, the start of combat, draw two additional cards. Dark Shackles, the start of each... Uh, sorry, enemy loses 15 strength this turn. That can actually be really important as well. Uh, take a speed potion. Just five decks for the entire combat. And let's remove a trash card. Get that strike out of there. We're probably better against these than we are against the heart. In fact, we're definitely better against these than we are against the heart. significantly okay um just kind of naturally play each of those keep the intangibility coming when it's coming okay. so we can't kill the back line right now Just one dual cast. It's not left in the deck, but we still have one hologram in there. As long as the hologram isn't the final card in this deck, we're still fine. We could actually just pop it up right now. Yeah, let's do it. Vision dual cast for no reason whatsoever there, but kind of got to get used to that. It happens. Reboot here, see how much better or worse it can get. I don't know, it's still pretty good. Let's hologram back the darkness and the hologram. Then we'll darkness, then hologram back the darkness, play the darkness again. I mean... Oh, that's looking good. Let's double that dual cast for the easy kill. Uh, Runic Icosahedron, if your HP is full, uh, gain energy at the start of your turn, as well as Lantern start each combat with additional energy, as well as a regen potion to keep us on full energy, and another darkness. That was the game very much being extraordinarily un... unrealistically kind to me. I had to play that first, otherwise I was going to lose HP and lose my buffer. It's important that I get the Echo Form out there as well. So I don't want to play anything this turn. As much as I desperately want loop out there and like a double version of loop, I don't want to play anything because the enemy is about to attack me and loses 57 of its damage there. I'm now actually going to drink the regen potion to double up this apparition because the apparition should be the first thing I play this turn. And now I get back on full HP at the end of the turn, so I continue triggering the Runic Decahedron. Same again. Start digging for more stuff. Two of those burn out of my hand by just leaving it though. Again, I'll double up on the zap. Just naturally play the charge battery after it. 
still going to take one damage here. All right, losing a Runidan and Cahedron at this point doesn't matter too much. We've got a bunch of leftover energy. We're fine. Much as I want a Glacier here, a Hologram Glacier, I end up with only two Dark Orbs, and two Dark Orbs is not enough to kill the Corruptar. 300 damage in a turn, right? So, I'm going to reboot, looking for other cards. Guess I should still play them. It's just extra block, but it's not helpful. All right. Double charge battery this turn. Single doom and gloom. Just to try and get through that barrier that we were having. Excellent. Yeah, let's... Double rainbow... With some more dark orbs out there. Beautiful. I'm growing strong. I'm going to deal just 120 damage straight up here. Rather than delay. Unfortunately, I can't debuff the enemy anymore at this point. So, Dark Shackles is no longer useful for me. I have no more debuffs in my entire deck. I should have considered that. I'm going to have difficulty with that, naturally. Charge battery, charge battery. Definitely darkness. Dark Shackles get it out of the hand. Uh, hologram back. I think Glacier here. Managed to take no damage that turn. Ugh, it's a lot of incoming damage there, though. So, eight. So, four is 60. That's 120 incoming damage. Right, well, I'm going to double Glacier. Strike Impatience. Hologram back Glacier. Play Glacier. Defense. And at the very end, Darkness. Yeah, there was, there was one out there, actually. There was one out that I only thought of when I was playing the hologram, and that's that I hologram back the impatience, play the impatience, and it draws exactly reinforced body. It's the only out that we had at that point. Still should have done it. I hate that I recognized it instantly. Damn it. Still... I'm surprised we got that far against the heart with that deck in particular. Uh, still got our Ascension 14 victory with the defect, though. My name is Ben Rhapsody, the name of the game is Ben Slater. It's my hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.